Hi guys, welcome back. It's UK here. Uh, just finished watching a vid by uh, Sean Driscoll about asking how much uh, do you buy into an RPG. Um, um, and in this, it's you know how, how much of the company's products do you buy? Past the rule book or the necessary uh, uh, books that you need to start the game. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, I used to be quite guilty of this. Um, a, a good example was probably uh, about 92, maybe 91, 92. Uh, a friend and I had decided to get into a game called Cyberpunk 2020. Um, not quite sure, because I've never been a big Cyberpunk fan, but you know, uh, we decided to get into this. And we'd gone to our local game store at the time. And uh, we both picked up a copy of the rule book, and that's when I noticed there was a huge uh, amount of source material for it. And looking through this, there was a Night City source book, which was the camp default campaign setting. Uh, there were three uh, quite cool equipment guides, um, as I recall. And straight away, I grabbed all four of those to go with the rule book. And my mate was like, "Why are you doing it?" You know. Um, let's try out the game first and see whether we like it. Or at least, you know, if you're going to do it, buy the the city book and the equipment guide. But don't buy the other books because, you, you know, we might not get into the game. Um, and I kind of, yeah, alright then. And then before we left, I hadn't. I'd had to go back and buy those other books. Um, because it struck me as, you, at the time, much younger chap, that you needed to have all this. Um, Likewise, I've got probably almost everything that Chaosium have ever put out uh, for Call of Cthulhu uh, from about 87 through to probably 2000, um, and quite a bit since, um, although I've stopped buying uh, that because I've got more than I need. Um, and then, of course, you get to where we are at the moment, which is with Pathfinder, and I have to admit uh, I kind of overdid it a little bit there. I, I picked up a couple of the uh, Galarian source books, the world books, and I thought, sorry, you know, this is going to be the setting I want. I'm going to go and buy the books. And we ended up going down to London uh, to a really cool store called Leisure Games. Um, it was something like their 20th anniversary, you know, they were doing a big sale sort of thing. And I bought pretty much every single um, region, city, or whatever source book that they had for Galarian. Um, I spent probably £120, something like that. Now, I haven't even read half of these books. In fact, a lot of them are, are going to be going up on eBay because I'm just never going to use them. I found the corner of that world that I like, um, and that's all I'm going to use. Um, and it's a bit of a shame, but, you know. But I've begun to notice the same thing with the uh, hardcover source book. Because as uh, you may know from my other events, I'm not a fan of options. I don't see that players need options, quite frankly. I think that's an aspect where we can ignore that. You know, um, it's not the character, it's not all the options that make the game interesting. It's the story that's being told and the character concept you come up with and what have you. Um, and yeah, I've still gone out and bought the Advanced Player's Guide and Ultimate Magic and Ultimate Combat, um, the Ultimate Equipment Guide, it's cool, you know, and it's like I, other than the vestries, the rule book, and the equipment guide, I'm really tempted now to just say sod it and not bother with the other ones uh, and just run a much more basic game. Um, and I think this is all part of the uh, kind of the problem with modern role playing uh, industry. Um, You've always had extra source books for role playing games, uh, but I remember in the 80s it was very much it was modules that were thrown out. Um, although, they, although TSR and a few others always insisted that modules didn't sell and campaign settings didn't sell, um, but I always used to see modules flying off the shelves. Um, but I think from the 90s onwards, especially with AD and D Second Edition, you just got a huge glut of books. Um, I remember spending. Uh, basically all my almost all my money every month in the early 90s buying 
three, maybe four books um, from TSR's uh, catalogs, it were, every time new books came out. Uh, because you had the whole um, complete classes guides, the complete race guides, complete necromancer, gladiator, the arms and equipment guide, monster mythology, legends and lore, you know, you name it. And they were just throwing books out. And I was definitely one of those players at the time who really bought into that. Um, and I think that's part of the problem. Um, because these are obviously companies that need to make money if they're going to stay in business. And the only way to do it is to keep throwing out books. But as we saw from uh, the Ascent of 3rd edition, a lot of the, the material that was being thrown out was fairly pants. Um, I'm much more a fan of if you're going to do something, make it worthwhile. You don't need to publish everything every month. Um, you know, and when you do publish something, make sure it's, it's worth the price. Make sure it's worth the GM buying it. You go. Um, so yeah, I used to be one of those people that bought everything. Now there's only, I think the only game I still buy whatever comes out for is Death Watch, uh, and that's because each of the source books that are released for that is either an expansion to the area of the campaign setting, um, or it's something that does actually add to the game. It's not just a random set of here have some options. It actually adds new. Um, chapters or uh, new benefits um, and it doesn't feel like just hordes of options like the ultimate books do for Pathfinder. Um, anyway that's my response uh, to Sean's vid um, and so until next time take care and good game.